Hi, I'm Ann Cusack, a psychologist at the UCSD Eating Disorder Center. And I'm Leslie Anderson, I'm also a psychologist at UCSD. And we're making some skills videos um, to help people who um, have eating disorders and are stuck at home under stay at home social distancing orders during this global pandemic. We know this is a really stressful time for people. So the skill that we're covering today, um, as usual, is from the DBT skills manual. And this one is improving the moment. So it's like when you're in a really crummy moment, how can you improve that moment just a little bit? You're not going to make this a fun time for anybody. I don't, well, I don't know, more power to you if you are making this a fun time for yourself. Um, but it's really just about making the moment a little bit more bearable so that it's easier to get through. And like all good DBT skills, um, Improve the Moment also has an acronym that we will be walking through um, as we go through skill by skill. And the acronym is aptly improve. So, I know, well done. Well, well done, done. DBT. Um, so the first I in improve is improving with imagery. Um, so this can be really just giving yourself some time to either mentally or visually look at something that really evokes um, a sense of um, calm and really takes you back to either a memory or a place that means a lot to you. So it can be doing something like looking at um, pictures or scenes um, such as a beach picture, if it's somewhere that you know and love. Um, I also know for me, improving a moment with imagery, I right above my desk have this picture of my dog. Really like the snuggliest Aww. thing on the planet. So anytime I'm having like a hard moment in the day, just looking at that really brings me back to like the idea that like I will one day also be snuggling with her probably in a few hours. Um, and so it just really brings me to the idea that I won't always be having the emotions I'm having currently and that I will be feeling like I was feeling in moments like that later in the day. And I feel like imagery is one of those skills where some people love it. Some people love to go um, online and listen to, you know, a uh, little guided imagery about being close to a waterfall or at the beach or something like that. Some people aren't into those types of imagery exercises and that's okay. There are hundreds mm -hmm. or maybe thousands. I've never tried to count. Maybe but millions. Maybe million. Mil who knows? There's so many DBT skills that you can use. So, you know, use the ones that um, feel like they sort of fit with you and um, are effective to practice. And like Leslie said, it can either be more mental imagery, like, you know, imagining yourself at a place or the more visual imagery of really actually looking at something. So if that mental imagery is harder for you, there's an option there as well. The next skill on this list is meaning. And um, this is one of the skills that I think for me has been uh, the most meaningful during the pandemic. I see what you did there. <clears throat> uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, and the thing about this skill is that it's it's about recognizing that you're in a hard situation, but, or and, there is something that you could um, learn from or some sort of silver lining in the situation. And this is one of those skills where you, it's really personal to you. Like you have to use something that um, means something to yourself. Uh, so it's like, traditionally, I kind of think of it as the kind of thing where, you know, if somebody that you love dies, you might think, well, they're in a better place right now. If somebody else says that to you, it doesn't feel great. But if that's a conclusion that you reach on your own, it might bring you some sort of comfort in the moment. For me during the pandemic, do I wish this was happening? Absolutely not. Is it causing all sorts of suffering and horrible things in the world? Absolutely. And for me, I can find some meaning in the situation in the sense that I am reminded to be grateful for some of the things that I have that are making it easier to get through this time, my family, my home, my pet, that kind of thing. I also know that I've been making a lot of meaning out of seeing like the good come out in humanity mm -hmm. of people really stepping up and helping each other, offering to get groceries for their elderly neighbors, um, first responders who are really putting themselves, you know, in the on the front lines, just trying to make a lot of meaning out of the idea that humanity really has come together. You know, I've seen videos of those like, you know, Italian families like singing off their balconies. And I think that really is the um, spirit of improving the moment and using meaning to do that. Yeah, you could focus on countless bad aspects of the pandemic, or you can find these little rays of light and things that you're grateful for, or ways to have your faith in humanity restored a little bit. And it's really just making the choice to focus on the things that give it some sort of positive meaning. And that doesn't mean that all of the challenging and hard components of this pandemic won't impact you or won't be weighed down on you emotionally, but it just will give you some moments 
of reprieve from that, like in between, if you're really focusing mm -hmm. on improving the moment with eating. Um, the next one is improving the moment with prayer. Um, so if you're someone who is spiritual or religious in nature, um, there really can be a, um, you know, sense of release and sort of talking to a higher power, really letting over your worries and the things that are sort of emotionally taxing you in the moment to, um, you know, some sort of religious either ritual or passage that kind of gives you a sense of calm. Um, if you are not religious or spiritual, this is also something that you can do and sort of just reminding yourself of like, you know, there are things out there greater than me, like this isn't a choice that I'm like having any control over and like it's gonna be okay, kind of like just realizing that we can't be in control of everything and kind of letting that go. So just any sort of like prayer or sending, um, you know, your worries to a higher power can be really impactful during this time as well. The next one on this list is using relaxation or relaxing activities. Um, so these are things like sitting in a hot bath or taking a hot shower, um, massaging your neck and scalp, practicing yoga. So I've heard and seen a lot of people on my social media who have downloaded like yoga videos and are watching those and practicing yoga at home, um, doing breathing exercises, deep breathing, that kind of thing. and. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can just kind of, I think, be aware if your muscles are tensing up and if you're feeling a lot of that um, tension in your body and then being mindful of doing something to relax yourself um, when you're at home. Um, the next one is by doing one thing in the moment. Um, and I always like this because I think this is in like particularly important right now. Uh, it's really easy when you are watching the news or getting news alerts to really let yourself catastrophize of how horrible um, this is gonna be, how long it's gonna go on for, and we don't have any of those answers. And so really staying grounded in the present moment, being in the here and now can really help sort of relieve some of that distress and bring your sort of emotions down so that they're more manageable. So doing things like focusing all of your attention on whatever task you're doing, um, focusing all of your attention just on what you're doing in the moment. Um, I know that like I'll be doing something like trying to read a book and then I'll get a news alert that will send me down this like catastrophic path of thinking. So being able to really just bring my mind back and set my phone down and just read my book if I'm reading my book is really a good way and helpful way to improve the moment. Um, yeah. And you know, I think anybody will tell you during this time, worrying and future tripping and catastrophizing, those are all ineffective. And it's like, well, what do you do instead? Because your mind just naturally wants to go to those things. The idea of one thing in the moment is let your mind focus fully on whatever you're doing in the moment, no matter what it is, rather than having it go off into the future or dwell on things that have happened in the past. And again, we know those worries are gonna pop up. So it's just about practicing this skill as much as you can so that they don't, the worries don't run through your brain all day long. Okay, the next skill is brief vacation. So it's the V and improve the moment, but you've gotta have the brief that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is give yourself a break, give yourself moments to not think about what is going on in the world right now. Give yourself moments of not worrying about needing to be productive or get things done or do any of the things on your to-do should list. So give yourself permission to take a brief vacation from what's going on. And it's brief because we don't want you crawling under the covers and staying there for days on end. But yes, if you need to give yourself permission to go crawl under the covers for an hour, a couple hours, yes, by all means, go for it. If you have children at home, you also might need a brief vacation from all of the entertaining and playing that is happening. So figuring out, I know I've heard a lot of my friends talk about screen time and not wanting to give their kids screen time. And sometimes a minute or two of screen time for kiddos might be a really good way for the parents to get a brief vacation. You can tell she doesn't have kids because she just said a minute or two of screen time. <laughs> An hour or two, a day or two, I, a week or two. You know, I've seen like a lot of stuff about just letting yourself <laughs> not worry about screen time limits. Which give, I them think is give them all. Very sound time. advice. Yeah. <laughs> We all need to be able to take brief vacations, and actually that includes our children too. Mm -hmm. You know, screen time is a little bit of a vacation um, from all this for them too. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, it sounds like we're, we're like not fully like <laughs> recommending all the screen time, but everything in moderation. You know, it's uh, it's it's dialectic. It is always. Um, and there's some other ideas on here too. Um, you know, turning off your phone for a little while, turning off your news alerts for a little while, getting your favorite vacation, maybe even like 
starting to plan your next vacation, which is probably not unfortunately going to be in the next couple of months, but um, maybe thinking about where you're going to go and what you're going to do once um, the travel restrictions are lifted. And then the last one is with encouragement and sort of rethinking the situation. Um, I really like this because I think it's just sort of a way to take positive self-talk like up a notch. So I kind of think about this as being your own personal cheerleader. Um, this can either be like telling yourself something like you got this, like you're going to get through this or reminding yourself something like this too shall pass. Um, I don't know about you, Leslie, but I really like to talk to myself and call myself by my last name when I'm doing this. It's like just kind of a fun way of being like, you got this key sack. So, you know, I don't know. I, I did not know that about you. <laughs> yeah, it, like, it has like extra oomph behind it. Well, because the suggestions are like, you go girl, you demand. Right. It, that doesn't work for me as much, but you got this key sack. You got mm. this key sack. It does have like a little ring to it. Right? But you can also say things like, you demand, or you go girl, whatever sort of fits for you. How can sure. you never say things like, you got this Anderson to me? You have to say that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in all seriousness, I think a lot of us are very quick to criticize ourselves yes, and absolutely. use really kind of um, I just mean or uh, just use mean language when we're talking about ourselves. And so even if you're not, even if you're having a hard time accessing your inner cheerleader, I think this is about doing something different than negative self-talk. So yeah, we so often, I think, talk to ourselves in, way we would, in ways we would never talk to other people. Um, and so it's really just trying to bring some of that kindness and encouragement and sort of rethinking maybe all of the ways that you're judging yourself for not doing something correctly or right and putting yourself into a situation to remind yourself that you actually can. And you can say that any kind of way to yourself that might be helpful. Or you could say it to your friends, colleagues. Thank family. you. I would you're appreciate welcome. that. You got this, Anderson. Oh, see, there we go. <laughs> so we'll be back with um, some new skills in the next video, but thanks for watching today.